All right, welcome to Flip the Script Podcast. So today I'm going to be covering the rise and fall of Vijaya Gotti, Twitter's former top boss lady. So who is Vijaya Gotti? She was born in India and the family moved here when she was three. She grew up in Texas and she went to school at New York University and Cornell. She was a lawyer in Silicon Valley for a while before joining Twitter. And at Twitter, she rose to one of Twitter's top executives. Up until recently, she was the head of legal policy and trust at Twitter. She had it all. She's relatively good looking, incredibly smart, and she became one of the most powerful people in Silicon Valley. And her downfall was that she became corrupted by power. She had an enormous amount of power and she knew it. She knew that her position in Twitter, which was the modern day public square, that she can censor voices that she disagrees with, that she doesn't like. And then she figured out that she could do this for political candidates. And she could control the narrative on Twitter to try to influence public perception, to influence elections. Now, let's make no mistake, Vijaya is very far left. And we all know that Silicon Valley is notorious for being a bunch of leftists. And Vijaya was no different. Now, Vijaya wanted to use her power to influence the political realm. Now, the first time I saw Vijaya was on Joe Rogan's podcast when she was on with Jack Dorsey and Tim Pool. Now, I immediately recognized how smart she was. And of course, she noticed that she's not bad looking on the eyes. And hearing her speak on Joe Rogan, I said to myself, wow, this woman has some serious power. And she talks like she's powerful because she was. Now, she ended up lying the whole time on Joe Rogan. Now, fast forward a couple years and now we're in 2022. And Elon Musk decides he's going to buy Twitter because of the censorship that was going on at Twitter. Now it's reported that when Vijaya heard that the deal went through and Elon Musk was going to be buying Twitter, she cried. She cried because she was afraid of what would be revealed. She never thought in a million years that she would ever be exposed. She thought that she could just keep on doing podcasts, doing news interviews, completely lying to everybody. Now, I would say that she went rogue because she wielded more power than the CEO Jack Dorsey did. She was the one calling the shots. She was the one. She is the one who is responsible for President Donald Trump to be banned from Twitter. And she had a role in every single conservative and public figure that was banned. She played a role in that. She called the shots. And then she cried when she found out Elon Musk was buying Twitter because she was scared of what would be revealed and what would be made public. And sure enough, on December 2nd, the Twitter files were released. Elon Musk has been saying that it was his mission to find out what happened with the New York Post Hunter Biden story on Twitter. And through an independent journalist named Matt Taibbi, the Twitter files were released. So what did we find out from it? Well, we found out that once the New York Post released the Hunter Biden story, Vijaya had made the decision that the New York Post Hunter Biden story violated the hacked materials policy that they had recently enacted at Twitter. Now, even though there was no evidence and no proof and no suspicion that Hunter Biden's laptop was hacked, she decided that she was going to run with that policy. And she she even received backlash from people inside Twitter saying, are we really going to do this? Can we truthfully say that this is hacked material? And there was pushback at Twitter. However, after some time, Twitter employees decided, yeah, we know that this policy is nonsense, but we're going to run with it anyway. So it went from, can we actually do this to, we're going to do it, and this is how. So they decided to make cover for it. Now, it was found out through multiple sources and hundreds of thousands of documents and emails that independent journalist Matt Taibbi went through that Jack Dorsey had minimal involvement in any thing that had to do with the Hunter Biden story. Jack came out after the fact and said that this was a mistake. He never went back and corrected it. But the one that was calling the shots was a Vijaya. And she did that because she did not want a bad story to come out about Joe Biden, the Democrat candidate for president's son. She did not want that story around because once Twitter banned it, then Facebook also went and banned it. And then the news media came out and said that it was Russian disinformation and then Democratic operatives who have connections to the intelligence agencies, some of them former employees, all signed a letter saying that this was Russian disinformation. The actions that happened at Twitter and other social media sites and the news media about this Hunter Biden story is nothing less than election interference. They clued together to make this story go away. They did not want the American people to know about it before the election because they see themselves as the gatekeepers. They know that they control what people think. They know that if enough people say that it was Russian disinformation, then it would be accepted and put out in the mainstream media that it is Russian disinformation and this whole thing would go away. However, it did not go away. It is still ongoing. They see themselves as the arbiters of truth. Now, whatever they say is the truth and anything counter to that is misinformation or disinformation. That's how they slander their rivals. They did this during COVID. They do this about the elections. Democrats can all day say that President Donald Trump 
colluded with Russia to win the 2016 election, and they could deny the election results of 2016 up and down for years. But now they say if anybody denies the 2020 election, then they should be shunned and shamed and looked at as conspiracy theorists. And they hope that the low information voter follows. So what they're scared of is healthy public discussion. They do not want free speech. They want to cancel opinions and voices that are counter to their own because they love power. They are power hungry and power corrupts, as we can see what happened with Vijaya. After Elon took over, she was one of the first people to be fired. Elon must have known there was something going on with her before. Some, some say that Vijaya is evil. I don't know if I would go that far, but she's close to it. But she thinks that she is the arbiter of truth. She thinks that she's the kingmaker. Power corrupts some people. Now, Vijaya is going to be all right. It's reported that she made $21 million in 2021. And before that, in 2020, she made $7 million. She will be all right. She probably doesn't even have to work ever again in her life. And she'll get another job at some left-wing company or maybe even as a contributor to MSNBC or CNN. So don't worry about Vijaya. She'll be all right. And for now, Elon Musk is restoring freer speech on Twitter. She allows more voices to be heard, more opinions to be expressed, which is a good thing. It's going in the right direction. Remember, the United States is not a democracy. It's a constitutional republic. Keep your mind sharp. Don't listen to the media. This is Flip the Script Podcast out.